joining us, whether it's virtually or here in our house in Fort Wayne, Indiana, because we're speaking tonight about 30 days to natural diabetes and high blood pressure control. It's an exciting journey. We're glad that you're here with us. And as we begin, I want to talk with you, well, just about something that may be on your minds. It may not be on the front of your minds, but it may be somewhere in the recesses of your minds. And I know about this because it's something that I've dealt with for many years. Let me illustrate it for you this way. All was very, very quiet in the DeRoe's household. I was just a little boy, eight or ten years of age at the time, and when I was sure that everybody was asleep in the house, I slipped out of my bed. I made my way across the bedroom and then into the hallway. You see, I had one single destination in mind, and that was the kitchen of the DeRoe's household. And so that particular night, as I walked then down the stairs, came down to the main floor of the house, I made my way very slowly to the kitchen. There was a single object of my desire a large metal canister, a cookie jar. And so it was. I walked over to that cookie jar. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever dealt with a metal cookie jar, but if you have, you've got to be very careful if you're going to sneak inside. <laughs> so very carefully, I lifted the lid off the jar, I reached in. David, what are you doing in the cookie jar? <laughs> it was Mom. She had caught me in the cookie jar. And she gave me a message that went something like this. David, don't you know eating cookies in the middle of the night is not good for you? Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but a connection was developing in my brain tastes good, bad for me. Now, in that very same DeRose household, I had two very loving parents. By the way, by all indications, they still are two very loving parents. They now live in Florida. But at the time we were living together, of course, me being a young man, young boy, I guess would be more properly the designation, and they wanted me to grow up strong and healthy. Now, you could say at this point in my life, that's a dangerous thing to admit, but that was their goal. And one of the things that mom and dad would put in front of me, one of the things they put in front of me were green, leafy vegetables. Now, I'm trying to say that with all the enthusiasm that I had as maybe a 10 or 12-year-old even by that time. Now, today, if you invited me to your home and you had some kale or collard greens, it's very likely I would have seconds on it. But back then, I was doing really good if I was just kind of, kind of playing with my, you know, kind of moving them around my plate. You, you remember how that worked? Sooner or later, my father would turn to me, and he said something that went like this, David, eat those greens. They're good for you. Again, I didn't realize it, but another connection was developing in my brain. Tastes bad, good for me. That's exactly right. And I see some of you smiling, nodding, and laughing because you realize that many of us grew up with this same construct in our minds, that there's basically two classes of things in life. They're the things that seem to bring enjoyment, but they're bad for us, right? And there's another set of things that we label as healthy, but uh, usually we attach adjectives like, you know what, dull, boring, 
distasteful? You're following along with me, right? So as we begin this 30-day journey, I start out with those two illustrations because I want to leave you with two key messages. Now, some of you, if you're familiar with some of the lectures I've given over the years, you may have heard two of my more popular lectures on this very theme of changing bad habits for good. We're not going to go through those whole lectures tonight. But I want to share with you two key points that you see projected here. The first one is you don't have to sacrifice enjoyment in life to enjoy hell. Okay? This is what the research shows us. The medical research shows us that the best lifestyles as far as living longer are the same kind of lifestyles that help us to live better and help us to enjoy life. But the second thing I want you to understand tonight, and this is so powerful, is that every one of us has the capacity to develop new enjoyments. Now, if we were to take the time tonight, maybe many of you could share with me stories about how you have developed new enjoyments, right? You might tell me, oh, I never liked uh, broccoli, but I kept eating it, uh, and I developed an enjoyment for it. Others of you might say, well, I could, couldn't imagine uh, ever eating uh, corn on the cob without smothering it with butter and, you know, putting about half the salt shaker on it. But uh, I left that off and I developed an enjoyment for it, right? We could tell stories like that. But there's a solid research base that shows whether it's sweets, whether it's salt, whether it's fat, you can develop new enjoyments. So if you understand this, as we begin this 30-day journey, you shouldn't be asking yourself, well, how little can I change and still get benefit because, you know, I like the things that I like. Well, welcome to the human race, right? We all like the things that we like, but we can develop new enjoyments. And if you understand that point, one of the questions we should be asking is, well, if I can develop an enjoyment for anything, why don't I just pick the best lifestyle? and develop an enjoyment for that. Does that make sense? So that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try in this program to give you some keys for the very best ways of living. And you say, well, that's all well and good, but how do we know what to change, right? I mean, it seems like there's so many voices today. Some people are saying, oh, you should do this. You, you, you hear one study that says, oh, well, this is good for you. And the next day it says, well, this is going to cause your early demise, right? And so a lot of people are challenged today. What is really going to work for us? Well, in this series that we're focusing on high blood pressure and diabetes, we're going to draw from a book that I had the privilege of co-authoring with a couple of other health professionals. It's called 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. Uh, Dr. Greg Steinke and nurse practitioner Trudy Lee and I co-authored this book uh, back in 2016. So about five years ago now. This book has been demonstrated to be a powerful, life-changing book. I was just looking the other day on Amazon. It's consistently in the top selling blood pressure books on Amazon, uh, over 800 reviews. And we've actually studied people who've used this book and related um, videos that went along with it that we had back in 2016. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. We found that some powerful things happened with people's blood pressures. So this is looking at people who use that book, plus videos designed to go along with the book when it was released in 2016. And what you see here is individuals with high blood pressure. On average, when they started the program, this is uh, drawn from three community groups, uh, one, a couple here in the US, one in Canada, uh, a total of um, 25 people with high blood pressure between those three groups. And you can see, on average, when they started the program, a systolic blood pressure of 157.5. Within 30 days, some of them stretch the program out a little bit longer, but within the course of the program, a drop, you see it there, of some 17 points in their systolic blood pressure. The diastolic blood pressure, the lower number, you can see on average it dropped 8 points. So what we've seen when people use the principles in this book, significant benefit for their blood pressure. So you say, okay, so we see people who use a book, 
are getting benefit. But what does all that have to do with this 30-day journey that we're sharing in this series that we're launching tonight? Well, that's another step in the development of our resources. Because after I came out with that book, some of you may realize that for many years I've worked uh, closely with indigenous communities here in our country, and I was sharing this book with one of my Native American friends. And he was looking at the book, and he said, well, he said something that could have been applied to any demographic. He said, you know what? A lot of my people aren't going to read a book like this. And we realized as we were working with people across the demographic spectrum that, yes, there's a lot of people that are readers that want something that has, what do we have in here, over you know, 300 references. There's other people who say, just give us the facts, just distill them into a simple program and tell us what to do. Don't let us make any decisions. Don't tell us, well, here's all kinds of things that can help our diet. Tell us what to do each day, day one, day two, day three. And so, in 2018, I decided to do just that. And I actually got in my office and I recorded a series of 30 roughly six-minute videos. I say roughly, some of the videos are a bit shorter, some a bit longer, but if you actually average out the length of the videos, it comes out, each one, just less than six minutes. So there's these 30 videos. They've been out on YouTube since, um, like I said, 2018. Some uh, 10,000 or more individuals have used them, distinct individuals. Many of them have watched, of course, more than one of them. So this is a huge segment of the population, but it's enough that we've been seeing people having results. So you can't just take a program based on a book and some very structured videos. The original videos were anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes long. People would come in group settings and watch them. You can't just say, well, that, if you're using the same principles, put it into six-minute bites on a daily basis, and it's going to have the same results, right? If, if you've ever done medical research or if you just think about it, you say, well, that's not equivalent. You may be talking about the same program, but you've got to look at the results of this new intervention. Now, I can't tell you that we've done a scientific study, but we've been hearing from people who've put these principles into effect over the last three years since this video series came out, and we're going to introduce you to one of those people right now. Uh, before we do, I want to tell you just some simple mechanics about where we're headed with the program, and then you're going to hear some exciting stories. So first of all, the landing place. If you want to get all the resources you need, if you want to watch the daily videos, by the way, what we're depicting right here is day number one. You can see the title there. It's called Be Bold. Okay, because what we're doing is just like I did in the first few minutes of this program, I'm encouraging people to not say, well, yeah, I'll go on a 30-day program, but if Dr. DeRose says I need to exercise more, well, I've been walking to the mailbox once a day. I'm going to walk to the mailbox one extra time a week. Okay, this would not be a bold decision. Are you following along with me? So we're, in the first day, we're challenging people to be bold, to make bigger lifestyle changes. But you're still going to be the one making the call, exactly what you're going to do. I'm going to cast a vision each day, a six-minute video. Where do you get those videos? Go to fortwayneadventist.org slash 30 days. Now, if you've registered for this program, you should have gotten materials already by email. If you uh, opted in for the text messages, every day you'll get a text message. Tomorrow is day one of the program. Okay? So Sunday, October 17th is day one. You are supposed to watch this six-minute video. Okay? That is your assignment. So if you want to be a, a faithful student in this 30-day journey, you will watch that six-minute video. And it's going to challenge you. It's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to challenge you as we go into this program together. We want you to be bold. Okay? We want you to say, hey, I can make some big changes and I can stick with them. Being bold for one person might be very different than someone else, right? Someone who's eating, uh, let's say, five pounds of chocolate a day. A bold decision might be to cut back to just uh, five Snickers bars, okay? You're following along. So uh, be bold is just trying to get you in a mindset, in a mindset of not just slacking off, really getting the mileage that you can 
out of this program. Okay? So with that background, I want to introduce you to Opal Barrett. Opal Barrett is someone you'll find learned about the 30-day video program. Remember, this program that we're going to use together has been out since 2018, and Opal is one of the people that actually heard about it. I had never met Opal until about a week ago when I interviewed her. Some of you know I have a weekly radio show, so this interview is part of a radio show segment. You'll actually hear me introduce the segment. Uh, I think the particular uh, cut we have, I may even be introducing the radio show. It's called American Indian and Alaska Native Living. That's the radio show that I've hosted for about 20 years. And uh, so Opal was my guest on that show. So we were, it's a pre-recorded show. Her segment has not yet aired. But because of the special nature of this program, we have gone ahead and we've pre-released it. So you can, it's about a 15-minute segment. We're not going to show it all tonight. I think we've cut it down to about nine minutes for you. And she's going to tell you about what this 30-day program that we're about to launch tomorrow did for her. Okay? We're going to go and listen to Opal and me talking together right now. Hello, I am Dr. David DeRose, and we are so excited that you're joining us today. We're speaking about a life-changing program, something that can make a difference for you and for those you love. It's called 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control. It's an absolutely free online program. And some of you have perhaps heard of the program before. It's something that I developed some years ago, but we're putting a Great spotlight on it today because we've got an amazing guest. Opal Barrett, so good to have you with us on today's edition of the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Opal, you are someone who has some very personal connection with this program. Before we talk about that, tell us a little bit about your health background. Did you have either diabetes or high blood pressure? When I went to my doctor in June of this year for my regular checkup, she said that I had uh, prediabetes and that I had um, my blood pressure was 185 over 110. And so she put me on medication. Yeah, she was afraid I was going to have a stroke because I'm 68 years old. No, I mean, that's a significant elevation of blood pressure. I mean... The higher the blood pressure is, you're exactly right, the greater the risk of things like stroke and heart attack. And at 185 over 110, that'll raise, I think, about every doctor's eyebrows. So you're put on a prescription medication. Tell us how it went from there. Okay, I took the medication for three days, and I was extremely weak and um, dizzy, and I coughed all the time. So I, I call my doctor back and I say, could I please just try something else because I just can't take medication. I'm, I'm very sensitive to medication to start with. Okay, so you ask her to, to help you get off medication. Did that uh, have much traction with her or did she kind of double down or change the medicine? What did she do? No, she asked me, could she change the medication? And I, I really didn't want to do that. I, I told her that I would work really hard to try, you know, if I could just make a lifestyle change or something. And she was hesitant, but then she had me make a diary and bring it to her every week because she was really concerned about me having a stroke. So, okay, you've, you've tried medication you have really high blood pressure. Presumably she was thinking, well, maybe it was just elevated in the office. Maybe you had this white coat, high blood pressure, so she's going to work with you, taking a log at home. What kind of numbers were you seeing? My blood pressure at home was normally around 152 over 90. Um, it stayed pretty, pretty much like that. If I drove the car or if I was doing any shopping, it would go up to... 180, 170. Um, it was just, I was in pretty big trouble. Wow. So you've got significant high blood pressure. It's not really coming down with what you're doing. Uh, then you hear about the program that we put together some years ago called 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control. 
It's a free program online. So tell me about something that comes to your mind that was different than you were doing that the videos challenged you to do. Well, day one, be bold. I, I considered my condition and I decided that day that I would give up sugar and excess salt. Those are the two things that I was going to work on, um, give up that day, and I did. Wow, you're a, you're a fast learner. Because cause those, those points about sugar consumption and salt come later in the program. But from day one, when you just heard that message, to be bold, you said, I already know some things I've got to do. I'm going to start doing them. Right. So how was that? Well, you know, I still crave the sugar. I still craved candy and chips and all that. And um, it, it was hard for the first maybe four days or so. But then after that, I just, it just came natural to me. I don't have any sugar at all or any cookies, cakes or pies or anything like that. And it just, it changed me. So tell me what's going on. You're following this program day by day. And did you watch a video every day? Yes. Yes. And you did it for the whole 30 days? Yes, I did. And I cut my caffeine on day six. Okay. And I had a split and headache for three days. <laughs> and you're still talking with me. But it was worth it. It was worth it because now it's like... Years ago, when my dad first got diabetes, I heard him tell my mother that, you know, I've made, I feel a difference since I've cut out coffee. And I was a real coffee drinker. I mean, my husband was a truck driver, so we drank a lot of coffee. But mm -hmm. um, those first three days was a little rough, but I made it through it, and I'm the better for it. So what were you seeing? What was going on with your blood pressure as you're going on this 30-day journey? Okay, um, it just gradually started going down. My first, my, like I said, it was normally 152 over 90. Um, my first, actually like three days, I noticed it go down to 140. And I'm like, no, that's not right. And I had to keep rechecking because I check it three times a day. Uh -huh. And... Um, I was so excited. I called my doctor and I said, I'm down already. But um, yeah, it, it was a significant change just in the three or four days. It was just, I couldn't, I couldn't get over it. You go through the whole program and uh, you started it back, you said, in, in June of 2021. Okay. And now here we are in October of 2021. Mm-hmm. Are you still following some of the principles in the program? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. Because, I'm, like I said, I just it's made such a big difference. I just want to keep doing more. And then when I started the day, I think it was day three to start moving, um, I wasn't really working a lot then. But um, I started walking five minutes out and five minutes back. And I thought, well, that's not much. But I started small. And um, I did that every day. And now I'm up to 20 minutes out, 20 minutes back. And I feel great. Wonderful. What are you seeing with your blood pressure? Where are you at these days? Oh, my goodness. My blood pressure is 118 over 76. Normally, sometimes um, my bottom number is lower, but I'm staying right at 118. That is fantastic. I know. My doctor's so impressed. <laughs> and I didn't mean to lose weight. I didn't go into this to lose weight, but I was 182 pounds in June, and now I'm 158. Wow. So that's like 25 pounds. I'm just, you've just given me a makeover. That's all. <laughs> well, this is exciting. And I'm so glad, Opal, that you've been willing to share your story. Let me just ask you one last question. There's a lot of folks right now in October of 2021, they're considering going on this 30-day journey as part of a group program we're offering to people throughout the country, throughout the world even. 
would you discourage some people from doing it? Is this just like a program that only certain people should be on? How, how would you advise people? No, this is this is for everyone and every age. Um, it's just amazing. I love the short videos. They're short to the point. And if you stick with this, you're going to be so amazed. You're going to love yourself again. <laughs> you're going to feel better. You're going to be more productive and be happier. Well, that sure got me motivated to do the program. I don't know about you. Um, it's exciting because, like I said, some uh, 10,000 people have uh, embarked on the program. It's not something that's brand new, and we're hearing stories about people like Opal who have reaped benefits from the program. So uh, we're excited about having each one of you embark on this journey. Now, it's even more powerful, as we'll be talking a little bit later tonight and as we go through the series, to do it with other people. So Opal was doing it on her own. But there is an advantage of coming together, whether you're joining us as a virtual, part of our virtual community, or whether you're here in person, not only here in Fort Wayne, but I know there's other sites uh, throughout the country, uh, some other places, even throughout the world, who've expressed interest in using this uh, four-night series. So it's four consecutive Saturday nights that we're delivering this as we walk through a 30-day program. We got the launch tonight, tomorrow, October 17th, Sunday, is your first assignment. Day one, be bold. And then each day, one video for 30 days. And you'll be doing the very same program that Opal experienced those benefits from. Now, I know it always seems a little bit unfair when you interview someone who's not here personally. You say, after all, I mean, is that really true? Was she just an actress? No, and even on the radio interview, I asked her, was I paying her anything? And I wasn't, okay, just to, to clear the air, if any of you were wondering. But uh, I want to tell you about another interesting connection, because I've got another guest, a live guest, that you'll be able to interact with after the program. Now, she didn't agree to that part, but I think she'll be amenable to it. She did agree to be interviewed up front. But I want to tell you the next chapter in the story, because something interesting happened in 2019, I was invited to give a talk at an international conference. And they said, Dr. DeRose, we want you to speak about the Methuselah factor. Now you might say, well, who would call a physician and ask him to speak about the Methuselah factor? After all, what is the Methuselah factor? Well, the Methuselah factor is a topic that I've been speaking about for a number of years. In fact, it was probably eight or ten years ago that I gave a six-hour a continuing medical education seminar for physicians on the topic. The Methuselah factor is my term for hemorrheology. Hemorrheology is the science of blood fluidity. And in 2019, I came out with this book called The Methuselah Factor. And uh, I had actually written the first 12 chapters, or at least an outline of the first 12 chapters, probably five or six years ago. Of course, I updated it and added some other information when the book actually came out. But I didn't have the last part. The last part of the book, I wanted to have the, the practical ways you could improve your blood fluidity. So the first 12 or 13 chapters in this book talk about if you improve your blood fluidity, you help your blood pressure, you lower your risk of heart disease, you decrease your risk of blindness, you improve physical performance, you improve mental performance. So that's the first 12 chapters. We go through 12 different things that improve when you improve your blood fluidity, your circulatory health. Well, you say, okay, well enough, but what does all that have to do with this program we're on? Well, remember, in 2018, I had just packaged our blood pressure program that, as I was doing that, I said, you know, these are the same principles that I've used to help people with diabetes for many years. So we rolled out that video series 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control in 2018. In 2019, when I'm writing the Methuselah Factor book, I said, you know what? Those same 30 daily principles also are the very same things that help blood fluidity, with a few tweaks. So when I wrote this book, the last 30 chapters of the book actually mirror 
the daily goals that I had shared in the video series. Does that make sense? So let me illustrate it this way. So I'm turning to uh, chapter 17. And chapter 17 is day three of the program, and it says move more. Do you remember that? That was day th that's the same as day three in the 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control program. Now, if I'm talking too quickly and confusing you, let me make it simple. The goals in this book, the daily goals, it's also a 30-day program, are the same ones that are in the 30-day video series, the free video series that we're using as part of this program. Is that straightforward enough? Okay. So, why I've given you that background is I want to invite my first guest up with me, Sheila Adams. Why don't you come on up, Sheila? And we're just going to relax here. Have a seat right there, Sheila. Thanks so much for being willing to, uh, to join me here today. No problem. Now, Sheila, this book uh, that I'm talking about tonight is not a strange title to you, is it? No, it's not. T tell me why that's the case. Well, um, a couple of years, well, it wasn't even a couple of years ago. It started in 2019. I had a scan, and it was a cardiology scan, and I had markers for developing heart disease. So um, I went to my regular physician where she said, well, maybe I'm going to send you to the cardiologist. So she put me on, you know, to the cardiologist and I talked to him for a little bit and he said, you need to change your life. My blood pressure was sky high. It was probably maybe not as high as hers, maybe 160 over 110 okay. when I started. So I went home with all, they gave me all the literature and stuff and I took it home and then I went online to see if I could find a book to help me with diet and to help me with lowering my blood pressure and getting off of the medication. And that's when I came across your book. Okay. The, so that's where you, you found the Methuselah Factor book and mm -hmm. uh, did you actually read it or do you think if you slept with it, it would rub <laughs> off on you? I actually read it. Dr. Okay. Rose. And so you read it and you went through a 30 day program like the book recommends? I actually went through 90 days. You went through 90 days. Mm -hmm. So you did the 30 day program three times? No, I did 30 days and kept going. <laughs> really? Okay. So, so tell me, what happened as you went through those 30 days? Okay. I, I, after I read the book, and um, I kind of tweaked you a little bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So she's an expert. She's a local expert. You know, if you want some fine tuning, you talk with Sheila. I tweaked it a little bit to, to accommodate myself. Um, I was a meat eater in which in using the book and using the program, I have decreased my reliance on eating meat. Mm -hmm. I don't eat it as much as I was. And that, that's part of the process. Um, another part of the process for me was exercise. There was no exercise. I, was, I work a sedentary job. I'm always sitting because I work with physicians all day. So I'm always sitting and not moving around a lot. So I incorporated the exercise. Then I had to look at the diet. And um, I had to um, decide what I was going to eat. And that's when I started adding more plant-based foods into my diet. And it had um, remarkable results. Well, so me. tell us, what are those remarkable results? And um, in that 30 to, I'd say, 60-day period, I lost 35 pounds. Wow, with the incorporation. I went back to the doctor in December of 2020. We were still in COVID. We still are. But... Uh, um, I had um, lowered my blood pressure to 120 over 80, and it remains steady to this day. Wonderful. So, so. You, dropped, you dropped the systolic like 40 points mm -hmm. and the diastolic like 30 points, mm -hmm. and dropped 35 pounds. Yes. This is really exciting. It was. So why are you here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm here to tell people that the actual diet, it actually works. You have to put in the work to get the result. And um, it was a joy in doing it, and I am continuing on with the uh, with the thirty day book, and I'm going to use that to uh, lose even more weight and to get off of the blood pressure medication and the other numerous blood pressure other medications that I'm on for edema and anything else arthritis. I'm 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 working with the doctor to use this diet to help me make my life better. Excellent. Anything else you think folks should know? If they're kind of hesitant, they're thinking, well, 
do I want to really spend 30 days of my life? I mean, 30 days, that's a whole month. Do you think it's really worth it? It's worth it if you, if you, if you love yourself and you're concerned about your health, it's something, it, it's positive. It's good for you to do. Sheila, you're an inspiration. <laughs> I wouldn't say all that, but... <laughs> okay, thanks so much for coming up with us, okay? Thank you. So uh, I'm excited because I know that if we have a group of people in Fort Wayne, throughout the country, throughout the world, who get serious about doing this program, we're going to hear a lot of success stories just like this. So I want to remind you about some things about the program, because some of you have enrolled, you've already been on the landing pages, and you've gotten some of the resources, but I just want to, um, to kind of walk you through some things. So uh, if you've already logged into the program website, the key is right here, you saw this earlier, fortwayneadventist.org, they are the host organization for these meetings fortwayneadventist.org slash 30 days. If you go there, you will find all the handouts. Each night, each of the evening meetings that we have, each of the four evening meetings, tonight included, you will get handouts. If you came to this actual venue, you should have gotten four handouts. Did all of you get those when you came in? Do any of you not have the handouts? If you don't, raise your hand and we'll get them to you. You all have the handouts? Okay, there's... Uh, if we have a, an usher that could get a set up here, anyone else missing one? Another over here. There's one over here in the front row. Okay, so you probably bring uh, four or five sets uh, and make sure, just keep your hands up and our ushers will, uh, will give you those. So let me tell you what's in your hands. Some of you have been following along. You see I've been following an outline this evening and uh, that outline says participant handout for night number one. We've walked you through the dynamics of health behavior change. We've shared some of these uh, changed lives, these real life stories. And then you'll see the next section is, uh, is basically going to introduce you to this landing page, okay? And so this is what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. If you were to log in right now to fortwayneadventist.org slash 30 days, I wanna show you what you'll find. So this is what you'll see first. You'll see our program, Powerful Natural Help for Diabetes and High Blood Pressure. See it right up there? That's the, what you'll see when you log in to the website. You scroll down and you'll see some really useful things. You'll find that you can subscribe and watch all of the episodes on YouTube. We'll send you a, a reminder. I believe that's how our team is doing that. Send you a reminder, you know, when you've, uh, or at least it'll show up on your feed or something that we've got a new addition out. It'll be uh, live streamed on YouTube. I know some of you are watching on YouTube, others on Facebook. Uh, you can see there, you can watch on Facebook. There's a link there. And if some of you are in the Fort Wayne area and you say, wait, I didn't know they're going to be giving out free handouts um, and printing all this stuff off, I don't have a printer. Well, just come on by and you can get directions right there right on the website. If you scroll down further, you're going to see each of the daily videos will be posted there. So already, even though you don't have to watch day one until tomorrow, day one is already on the landing page. And you can just click on that and you'll watch, I want to say a six minute video, I think the, the first video is shorter, I think it's four and a half minutes, okay? So prioritize those videos. Each day there's going to be some specific challenge. And remember, the two people we've heard from this evening, the reason they experienced those benefits is not because they signed up for a program or bought a book. It's because they did what? They actually applied what we shared during the program. Okay? If you scroll down, then you're going to see the resources. So all of you who are viewing online, all the resources that we passed out tonight, these are available for you to download the participant handout, 50 tips for lower blood pressure, a set of bean recipes, I'll explain that um, in a few minutes, and then our 30 daily lifestyle goals checklist. This is really a critical document, and I'll talk with you about that in just a minute. So let's um, walk you through a few rules for the program, some ground rules. So the first one is an educational versus a treatment program. This is an educational program. So even though I'm a physician, I'm not you're not in a group treatment program. We're not going to be me measuring your blood pressure here. 
Don't uh, send me your blood pressures from home and say, Dr. DeRose, should I cut my medicine down? We want you working with your providers, okay? It's very important. The program is powerful. You've heard about it, okay? So if you're taking medicine for blood sugar or blood pressure, you need to be communicating with your provider, or at least with the office staff, okay? Say, I'm making some changes. I'm going to be monitoring my numbers. Keep them abreast because you very well could need some adjustments in your medications, perhaps as early as the first week. So just keep that in mind. But don't do that on your own. So make sure your medical providers are aware. Now let's talk about that key handout. That's figure 15. Um, that's uh, one that we've provided for you free of charge. It looks like this. If you're in the audience, um, it um, looks like this. We're projecting it right now. Figure 15. We say, well, that's a weird number. This is night number one. Why not call it figure one? Well, it happens to be figure 15 from the book, The Methuselah Factor, okay? So we've just given you uh, one of the key tables in the book for free. All of you have that in hand or you can download it. And as you go through that figure, it's going to go through the daily goals. Now, I told you we tweaked the 30-day video program just a little bit for this book. And uh, I'm going to go to day one in the book, and I'm going to tell you what the title of day one is. It says, Be Bold, Call the Bank. Now, some of you are saying, now, wait a minute. I thought this was a free program. Why has he got me calling my bank? Okay? Well, I am not having you call your bank to make a withdrawal. In this book, The Methuselah Factor, we do share some other things beside what we're going to be talking about in this series. One of the things we talk about is the value of being a regular blood donor. And so the challenge for the first day, be bold, really you don't have to do anything. We're just challenging you with a mindset. But individuals who are reading the book were saying also at least call a blood bank. Find out where a blood bank is so you're at least thinking about donating blood. But as you go through this table, you're going to see it summarizes the things you're watching in the videos. That first day is a little bit of an exception because you won't hear anything about blood donation in day one of the video series. Okay? If, if, if there's a few things that are confusing, we're going to get to some questions and answers here before too long. But let me uh, move on. So this is your, your spreadsheet, if you will. And what you're going to do, let me just illustrate it. You heard Opal talking about day three. What you'll see here, if you look under day three, it says get blank minutes of exercise per day slash week. You say, what does that mean? I'm challenging you to do more with exercise. You set the goal. Did you hear what Opal did? She said, I was walking five minutes out and five minutes back, right? How many minutes is that? Ten minutes. So she would have written in there, get ten minutes of exercise per day. And then that was on day three. You see day three in that first column, and then she would check that off. Does that make sense? And then each day thereafter, she's going to still stick with her exercise goal. So every day when I give you a challenge, you continue that practice for the 30 days. So it's not just you exercise one day in the 30. You say, I'm during the course of these 30 days, I'm going to exercise so many minutes per day or so many minutes per week, and then you're going to keep tra track of that from day to day. That's why we've given you that free table. I want you to bring these tables back with you. If you're in another uh, setting where a group is meeting together, bring this back with you next week because this is going to be one of the things we're going to talk about. How did you do? Okay? We're not going to force anyone to speak. I'm not going to call you up front unless you give me permission to do that. Okay? If you're having a good experience and you want to share it, we might have you up for one of the interviews. Do you see how that works? Clear enough? Okay, let's move on. Access your daily videos. Remember, that's easy to do. If you get the text messages tomorrow, you will get a text message saying, here's Dr. DeRose, day number one, and you can just click on it and watch the video. If you don't have it set up that way, go to the landing page. There's the landing page again, fortwayneadventist.org slash 30 days. Then you say, well, wait, you threw some other things up here. What are you doing there? Well, if you are tuning in today and you're saying, this is amazing, I wish I had a group just like you have in Fort Wayne, or you're saying, I'd love to have some of my neighbors come to my home next week, watch this live and interact with you live, well, if that's your interest, you can go to the leaders section. It's very similar, 30 days 
hyphen leaders instead of just 30 days. So it's fortwayneadventist.org. And we'll have the resources there for you to run the program, actually to work with us as a remote site. So that's another opportunity you've got. And if any of you still in this room or any of you tuning in, you're not registered. Important to register because then you can get those reminders. Then you can get emails sent out to you with the resources as well. That's TimelessHealingInsights.org. So that's where you register, TimelessHealingInsights.org. By the way, send that link to your friends. Have them join the program. This video is being archived. So if someone missed tonight's presentation, they can watch it tomorrow or the next day and jump right in to the 30-day program. Now, the next point I want to make is pairing up with a partner. You heard from Opal, you heard from Sheila, and as I heard their stories, they both did it on their own. The program works on your own, but if you have a partner and if you work with a group, even better. So we're going to challenge you. We're not going to force you, but we're going to challenge every one of you watching to find a partner. You say, I'm just sitting at home watching this video, or I just came here alone tonight. Well, if you're here in person, don't leave without making a friend, okay? Because what we find if you connect with someone else, all we're asking you to do, this partner, you're just going to touch base with them once a week, okay? Sometime during the next week, you're going to tell them about something you did that has to do with the program. Or maybe something you're struggling with. You're saying, boy, Dr. DeRose said I need to exercise more, but I'm already exercising, you know, two minutes a day. How can, can I really do any more? Is there anything else I could do? And the partner might say, well, have you ever thought about doing three minutes a day? And you could say, wow, what an amazing idea. I would have never thought of that without a partner. Well, hopefully they'll be more insightful than that. You get the point, right? Okay, why meet weekly? A number of reasons why you may want to meet weekly. You may want to discuss some of the other free resources we have on my YouTube channel, Compass Health Consulting. If you really like the Methuselah Factor idea and you say, I don't even know why I'm here. I don't have high blood pressure or diabetes. If you jump on there and watch, uh, go to the playlist for Methuselah Factor, we have a free video that goes along with every one of the first 12 chapters of this book. So why would you want to do the things in this program if you don't have high blood pressure or diabetes? That's a great resource, and your partner may have viewed something and share it with you. Do you need help linking up with a traveling companion? You may not be here tonight. You say, I I'm just watching alone. I don't know anyone who's going through the program. In fact, all of my friends have said, I want nothing to do with you. Well, we've got a friend for you. He's someone who has the last name of D. Rose. And it's not David, that's me. It's not Sonia, that's my wife. But our son, Victor, he is uh, willing to help connect you. Victor is a, a business major, kind of an entrepreneurial guy. He does better holding um, devices than I do. And he'll also do better with connecting you with a partner than I will, okay? So uh, victor.derose at yahoo.com. If you're viewing this program and you say, hey, I'm in France. By the way, we have a number of people in France who said they wanted to uh, take part in this. If you're in France and you're looking for a partner, we've got a number of people in the Paris area who've said they're doing the program. Reach out to Victor and he can help connect you with someone who is registered for this program in France. Now, there's not a guarantee that someone's going to be in your backyard. But Victor will work with you to try to connect, with you, uh, connect you with someone locally. Fair enough? Here's another reason to meet weekly. And that's because sometimes we hit bumps in the road. And here in these evening meetings, we're here to answer your questions. I'm just going to be honest with you. We're going to take some questions tonight. Uh, we have folks who are watching live, uh, putting questions in through the chat. If you have questions about anything I've said tonight or things I haven't said, you should have an index card. Uh, if you've got an index card, just raise your hand if you've written a question. We've got uh, ushers who will pick that up for you and uh, take your questions. But we're trying to be proactive, too. And we know in week one, one of the challenges for people is this one. Day number four, be big on beans. Okay? A lot of people have told me over the years they have problem with beans. So I'm going to invite my wife up. She's also a physician, Dr. Sonia DeRose. Sonia, why don't you come up? And, oh, you brought me a gift. Okay, come on up. <coughs> so... Uh, we're up here because in addition to giving you some recipes for beans, that uh, when we're challenging you to eat more beans, now this is really exciting. I don't know what you thought about this, Sonia, 
But did you see this recipe for black bean brownies? I did, and I've actually had those, I'm pretty sure, and they're good. Okay, so people that don't like beans, they might even like eating brownies. That's Is true. that possible? I think so. Okay, so we've got some recipes here to try to help you eat more beans. We're going to do practical things like this every night. They'll be in the handouts. If you're here in person, if you're at a live session, you'll be able to get the handout. Or if you've registered... Or if you just go to the landing page. All of those are ways to get the resources. Sonia, what about other challenges that people have with beans? Even before you go to that, um, another good way to eat beans is like this, one of the other recipes there, the garbanzo oat waffles. You can also do that with soybeans. Uh, and you can see in the recipe how to do it there. Uh, but you just soak the beans and then you add some to the blender with the other waffle ingredients, blend it up and make your waffle. You'll never know there's beans in it, but they're delicious and they're really filling and very healthy for you. So that's another way to get some more beans. Okay, you're getting me hungry for breakfast. I hope you're going to use some beans and make some waffles or something for us at home. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. So what about some other pointers with beans? What other challenges do people have and other things you can help them with? Well, some people say, I don't like beans because they give me too much gas or flatulence, however you want to say it. Um, or I just don't like how they taste, or, you know, or they just don't know how to fix them. And so, granted, can, you can buy canned beans in the store, and I would say, yeah, they're a lot better for you than uh, no beans, but typically they're very high in so sodium and salt. If you look at the labels on canned beans from the store, they're also not cooked nearly as well as I look like beans cooked. When, I, when you cook them yourself in a crock pot or a, you know, Instapot's my favorite way to make them, but you can make them so they're just mushy soft and just creamy and melt in your mouth type of thing. Oh, making me hungry thinking about it. <laughs> but uh, there's also ways to, uh, to decrease the amount of flatulence that is, can be created by eating beans. One is to soak them first and then drain the water off that you've soaked them in and put fresh water in before you uh, cook them. Another way is to freeze them after you've soaked them, to freeze them for several hours or overnight before you cook them. Uh, but just, uh, just cooking them, you know, soaking them well, draining the water off co and cooking them thoroughly uh, makes a big difference. Okay, Sonia, I know you brought something up with you. <laughs> And uh, we were talking about different ways to eat beans. And uh, we have a, a, a video interview. If you go to my Compass Health Consulting YouTube channel, you'll see that we've got an interview uh, with a fellow by the name of Steve Wolberg, who runs a sprouting course. But you can catch some of the pointers there in about a 15 or 20 minute video for free. But uh, you got something to illustrate sprouting for us? Well, we actually watched, uh, or we, you did a radio show actually with Steve Wolberg. And uh, I had make, made sprouts before, but typically like alfalfa sprouts. I had never sprouted beans before. Uh, and so we thought we'd try it. And lentils are one of the easiest ones to sprout. And he talks about that on his, the, Steve Wolberg talks about that on his video. So I thought, hmm, I'm gonna try that. And uh, so I'm sure you've all seen lentils. This is half a bag, because some are part of the bag. But it's a very super simple thing to do. You can just take a, a, like a peanut butter jar. You want preferably a jar that has as about a wide a top as the rest of it because it's going to swell and fill it and you'll have a hard time getting them out once they become microgreens if you don't. So you take, I just, you take a half a cup of lentils, put them in here. You know how if you're in, working with any dry bean, you, you sort through them and rinse them three times just to get dust and dirt and all whatever off. And then then you just fill the jar up with water and let it sit overnight or you know at least five or six hours, whatever. I just Overnight's the easiest thing. Then in the morning, you drain the water off. You can just take the lid kind of like this and drain it over the sink. And, um, and then you just let it sit with a, with a lid. Usually I just use either a paper towel or a big, little bit bigger lid. I know they have fancy jars with lids with holes in them. You can order online the lids that are, they're not that expensive, but I've never gotten around to ordering any. Uh, these just soaked um, 
since this morning. Now is this the same, the and this same is amount? A, yeah, this is the same amount. So this is a half cup and this was a half cup. But this just soaked since this morning. So you can see there's, you know, they're more than doubled in size already. So then every day, or twice a day actually, you just put water in and drain it off again immediately. So just rinse Make sure, it. So you're just rinsing it twice a day. And then you just, like I said, I like a peanut butter lid from a bigger peanut butter jar or something bigger just to lay on top. You don't want it screwed shut tight because it needs some air. Um, you, like I said, you can use a, just anything flat to lay on top of it. Twice a day you rinse it. Within two or three days, you'll start to see little sprouts, tiny little sprouts starting. If I had uh, prepared well enough in advance, I would have done it last week, which I planned to, but I forgot, so forgive me. And I could have brought sprouts to show you. That's what my intention was. But Maybe next week. We'll see if we can pull it off. Except I won't be here, but you'll have to bring them. Okay. But anyway, so in, you know, in th probably three, four, I like them when the, they're getting a little longer, the sprouts are a little longer, and then you keep doing it, maybe in seven, seven, eight days, even the 10 days more, you get microgreens. So they'll have you know, a sprout like this long with tiny leaves on one end and the, you know, the roots on the other. And, there's, uh, and you just eat the whole thing. They're delicious on sandwiches and salads, all kinds of ways. Thank you so much, Sonia, for coming up. <clears throat> Well, in most of these sessions, we're going to give a significant amount of time for your questions and answers. Tonight, we just have a limited amount of time. We didn't think there'd be a lot of questions because we're just starting, but we have a team here who's fielding questions that are coming in on the live stream as well as from here in the audience. So what, what are we getting? Are you guys all getting the question on the green mic? Okay, so go ahead. Okay. It says, how do I convince my parents who are both nurses that they need to change their lifestyle and that moving three days a week at work during their shifts isn't really enough for them? And also, how do I convince and encourage them to change their diets to incorporate more greens, vegetables, and healthy fats? This is a great, these are great questions. You know, how do we, the people that we love, how do we motivate them to make changes? And what I would say is, just to be honest with you, share with them this video because you've heard some real life stories of how people are improving their health. And this program is not something where it's one size fits all. People get to make individual decisions about how much more they're going to exercise, how they're going to improve their diet. And I think this is a great way for, uh, for anybody to say, I need a partner. Mom, I'm going on this program. Would you please do it with me? I need a partner. Dad, how about the three of us do it together? I think it's a great strategy. Any other questions tonight? We also, uh, on your sheet, the 50 tips for lower blood pressure, would you please give three or four examples of foods high in magnesium, potassium, calcium, and ACE compounds? Okay. So the question has to do with uh, this point in the uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Things that are high in magnesium, potassium, calcium, and ACE or ACE inhibitor compounds. Um, this is drawn right from chapter 5 in the book, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I am actually going to give you three tables next week. I'll put it in the handouts. This will be one of our handouts that will go through the champions in these three categories, magnesium, potassium, and calcium. And I'll also throw in the table that has to do with the ACE inhibitory compounds because it's kind of a lengthy discussion, a lot of material, and I, I don't, I'm not able to project it right now. So why don't we plan next week? Make a note for me that uh, one of the things we'll touch on in next week's session are those uh, four topics. Anything else coming in this evening? I believe Paul indicated that he had a couple of questions from okay, the audience. Okay, so we've got some other questions coming in? We do not. I apologize. Okay. So um, I am glad that you folks took it easy on me with the questions because we wanted to end promptly tonight at 8 p.m., okay? So I know you probably had some more questions and that you were wondering about, but save those questions for next week. Now, here's the great thing. If you're signed up, if you're signed up as a participant, if you've registered, each day you'll be getting a reminder, a link to the video, and with that video, you'll have a chance to ask any questions about the video. So next week when we get back together, the special emphasis will be on answering your questions. So just like some of the great questions that came in tonight, we'll 
give a more complete answer to those four specific areas that were talked about. So uh, if we can project the screen just one more time, um, I want to put up for you as we conclude these uh, three important websites. And let me just remind you what they are. If you are here in the audience and you've not registered, I really want to encourage you to do that. You do it with that last website, TimelessHealingInsights.org. If you've got a loved one that you're concerned about, like the parents that were asked about, I don't care whether they're health professionals, engineers, or if they're uh, retired 95 years of age, or if they're 12, okay? By the way, a great thing to do with one, one of your children is to go through, a, even a young child or a grandchild, go through this program with them. Say, I need a partner. By the way, if you come back here live next week, I am going to ask my folks when you come in the door, I don't want this to scare you off, but they're going to ask you, do you have a partner? And if you say no, they're going to say, would you like one? If you say no, they won't say anything more, okay? But if you don't have one, they'll help you find one. Fair enough? If you're online, please reach out. And I didn't put his name up again, but victor.derose at yahoo.com. Fair enough? Okay. Those are the other websites you need. I've appreciated all of you joining us for today's edition of the program. We'll get back together one week from tonight in this very venue. Join us live. Join us virtually. We'll look forward to seeing you then. I'm Dr. DeRose.